locked in the game. Three returnees, one rookie, 22 drivers, one new team, one a return of number one on the car of Max Verstappen. New rules, new season, new hope. It's all that's left now is the anticipation of 22 drivers going into turn one for the first time in brand new Formula One vehicles. There are three, four, five red lights and the drivers, three baggers at the back. It's time to break a new door in Formula One as this lights out and away we go, go, go. Charles Leclerc gets a decent start. Lewis Hamilton gets an even better start. That's is down to his 11th place. He's falling like a stone. Oh, he's terrible under steer there. Going to that corner. I wonder if he's got some damage. Oh, no, a Jackson spins. Jackson spins. So it's here when Jackson stops a horrible under steer in that car. And then he hits the rear left of Alonso and spins the car on his own. But meanwhile, he's going to start passing some cars there. Aiden Jackson around the outside, Sebastian Vettel, easy as you like. And that's one, just of how many will need to be seen. Hey Jackson, here we go. Another car to pass is Nicholas de TV. Uh, it should be rather academic because it is the Williams and Aston Martin. He is down the inside of Big Schumacher and it's an easy pass. Jackson's forced to the inside uh, by Bottas doing the tried and tested cut across the track down the first start finish straight. But Jackson says, you're not doing that. I'll go round, round the outside of you then. And it's a great pass by Jackson up to Sebatine. Now uh, there could be another one now. He, uh, he has DRS on Sonoda. So no, also has DRS is going to try and move down the inside of that corner. What a great move from Jackson. And now he's going to go down the outside of Sonoda. And Jackson's going round the outside of almost everybody today. So many outside passing moves, he made that one stick as well. It's on Sonoda, that's Gasly, my apologies. But either way, Aiden Jackson now in 15th place and rising. Even with DRS activated for the car ahead, Jackson is still passing those ahead of him. Look. Comes from so far up, Jackson. Albert just leaving the door open. Oh, oh no, no! Oh no, Max Verstappen pull it to the side! That's a retirement for the Red Bull Power Train! The retirement of Max Verstappen means that Nico Hulkenberg in the Audi Sport F1 team car is running in sixth position. And which will become fifth and maybe even fourth as he passes the Clare and Hamilton as they kick. Aiden Jackson, he's past Magnussen, he's back into 10th, knock on covers, and Jackson goes round the outside again. Doing it a Roman invitation, making Jackson go the long way round him, he has done it. That is P9 for Aiden Jackson. And they went full wide. Oh no. Oh, copy. Oh, there's nothing strange with the engine that can stop him now. Charles Leclerc wins. The Bahrain Grand Prix. Please give a round of applause to Audi Sport F1 team as Nico Hulkenberg and Aiden Jackson are going to score points on their debut. They've definitely got a very decent race car. It's 8th and 9th for Audi Sport F1 team with a sensational drive by Jackson to boot. With the first round completed, the 2022 Formula 1 season is well underway. And whereas we didn't get the full-on racing at the front, Due to a comfortable, if not dominant, win for Charles Leclerc, we still got a good advert for the 2022 technical regulation shakeup. 
mostly due to the overtaking talent of Adrian Jackson after he fell to the back on that one after a spin. Hello everyone, I'm the Simicales of YouTube and Twitch TV, joined as always by our league commentator Aaron Henwood, and we are getting set up for the second round of the 2022 season here at the Jelly Corniche Circuit for the second running at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. It's touted as the fastest street circuit in the world, and it certainly lives up to that billing, and it provided us with that crazy first race last year in which Lewis Hamilton won, but not after another controversial moment between himself and Max Verstappen. As for this year, there has been fears about this race going ahead due to the events outside the track, but the 22 drivers have lined up on the grid as the countdown towards lights out approaches. Taking a quick look at the championship standings for drivers is epidemic at this moment, as it is the Bahrain Grand Prix finishing order, with Perez taking the fastest lap bonus point, putting him up to 19, giving Leclerc a 6-point lead. And it was the, his defence against Sainz that stopped Ferrari taking full points for the constructors. But there's no doubt who the stars of the show were, as the new entry for 2022 Audi Sport F1 team scored a double point finish with Hulkenberg 8th, who was nursing his engine towards the end, and Jackson in 9th after another spirited fight back for the field after spinning and falling to the back at the end of lap 1. Let's bring Aaron in here and get his pre-race thoughts. Thank you, Chaos. Well, it is true that events outside the racetrack have certainly overshadowed things a bit here, but we're certainly in for a potentially cracking race, with the two championship contenders on the front row of the grid, with Max Verstappen taking his first pole position of the season ahead of Leclerc. But the man to watch off the start could be Jackson, who starts seventh after a second consecutive Q3 appearance in the Audi car. And we're hearing that he's going aggressive off the start by starting on the soft tyres. On the other side of the garage, however, it turns out that Holkerberg was lucky to finish the race when he did, because had the race gone on much longer, the engine problem he was actually nursing could have turned out to be rather terminal, and as a result of that, Audi have elected to take a brand new power unit and incur a penalty which puts him at the back of the grid for this race. But Audi did show very decent race pace last time out in Bahrain, so there's every opportunity still for Nico to score points from there, but overtaking here is somewhat more difficult. But the disappointments of qualifying were once again the Alfa Romeo and Haas teams with both their cars all outside the top 10 as their promise of improved pace still hasn't shown itself. And at the front, I feel that Leclerc has the overall car advantage over Verstappen so I think he will win today. And we know that Max Verstappen's kind of weakness in his style is being, has been at street circuits before even though he has won the Monaco Grand Prix previously. It will be much closer, but Max will be looking just to finish the race and get to the end and put some points on the board after the DNF in Bahrain. Thank you, Aaron. We will join you in just a moment for Lights Out, and while he gets set up in the commentary box, we'll take a lap around the Jelly Corniche circuit. Officially, it has 27 corners, but in my opinion, I do think that is a bit of an exaggeration. Nevertheless, however, it is a truly breathtakingly fast circuit, and who better to demonstrate that fact than the fastest man in Formula 1? the world champion Max Verstappen with this lap that secured him pole position for this race. So here we are on board the world champion Max Verstappen for a lap of the Jelly Corniche circuit for the second running of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, much earlier than last as it was the penultimate one, now it's the second and we are here with radically different race cars from back then. So out of turn 2 of 27 on this circuit, although I think that can be a bit overstated as most of these corners are just sweeping curves rather than actual corners. Look how planted to the road this Red Bull is in this section. Max Verstappen and Checo Perez have been absolutely at one with their Red Bull this weekend and the characteristics of the tracks to Red Bull down to the ground. It's looking like a pretty dominant weekend for them as Max Verstappen crosses the first set of the line fastest of anyone so far as he enters this hairpin. A little bit of banking, very similar to Zandvoort and Abu Dhabi or the new Abu Dhabi track that will be the case this year as we come round the next sweeping section and again it's effortless from Verstappen and from Red Bull as a whole actually they've been in the best round here by far uh, a car that has struggled is the Audis though and uh, we'll have to see if that understeer uh, really comes into effect later on as Max lives off a little bit at the end of the first DRS zone. Now we're at the second one. It's much more of an advantageous DRS zone with very minimal uh, curve taking to do. 
it's just a sweeping left bend here. Down into the final hairpin of this track and the final corner, turn 27, exited it effortlessly and that is allowed at the fastest street circuit in the world and that is the lap that secured pole position for the world champion Max Verstappen for today's race. Jeddah provided us with one of the craziest races of last season and there's been a few differences since then. Now we have 22 drivers thanks to the inclusion of Audi Sport F1 team looking ever promising on their debut couple of races and in brand new Formula 1 vehicles so literally anything could happen. It's the second round of the Formula 1 2022 season for the second running of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and commentary of course from Aaron Henwood. Becky Kills, good evening everyone, we are here to do it all again and if it feels like Jeddah last time was a few months ago, that's because really it was. And uh, we witnessed one of the craziest races of last season in which Lewis Hamilton took victory seemingly on a way to an magnificent comeback in winning his 8th record breaking world title. Unfortunately in Abu Dhabi, things didn't really turn out that way a race later. Max Verstappen took his first instead and uh, well what a difference a few uh, months have made because Mercedes are no longer the powerhouse of dominance they once were they only line up on the second row of the grid today behind the front row of Charles Leclerc and pole man Max Verstappen as for Aldi they've had a tale of two halves Aidan Jackson got his best personal starting position of his career in seventh bear in mind he was fourth in Monza but he obviously got that due to grid penalties given out galore at that event Meanwhile, on the other side, Nico Hulkenberg's engine nursing was uh, turning out to be a terminal problem, which forced Audi into a complete power unit change, meaning Hulkenberg will start from the back of the grid. Uh, but there is the front, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. The men will be really keeping an eye on throughout this race. Hopefully, we'll get a bit of a more of a battle than we had in Bahrain. Uh, with uh, Max down in fifth, it probably soured the racing potential a little bit as Charles ran away with it. It might be a bit more difficult this time. Red Bulls look planted, but Ferrari look good. Here's the grid then. Nico Hulkenberg will start from last following his penalty and power unit change. Look for him to come through the field, hopefully. It is the TV's 21st. And ahead of them are Albert and Lance Stroll, followed by Vettel and Yubi Sonoda out in Q1 in the Alpha Tauri. Mick Schumacher 16th behind Pierre Gasly and Kevin Magnussen 14th behind Joe Guan Yu. Valtteri Bottas is 12th, meaning Alfa Romeo and Haas still haven't fulfilled their potential in the Ferrari Superbet power unit. Daniel Ricciardo was 11th, and then we're going to the top 10 with Esteban Alcon and Lando Norris. Fernando Alonso is alongside Aidan Jackson in 7th, and then it's the two Mercedes, George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. Probably expected to be behind the all-powerful Ferrari and the good-looking Red Bull. Signs is behind Perez on row 2, and at the front row of the grid, as we said, Charles Leclerc is alongside Max Verstappen. There was only three temps separating the two at the end of qualifying, but Red Bull looked like the best car, at least around this circuit. Here we go for the formation lap. Well, there were fears of a race race going ahead, but the 22 drivers are lined up on the grid, and we are going racing. And Aiden Jackson is certainly going racing because according to that graphic and according to this on board, which rather confirms it, Aiden Jackson is on the soft tyres and the only man on the soft tyres. So it looks like Audi's going for a very interesting strategy with Jackson. Looks like they could be hoping that maybe he beats one if not both of the Mercedes and runs away with it. Now, will he catch the Ferraris and Red Bulls remains to be seen. We don't think Audi's that good yet. Uh, but Audi has the luxury, and we didn't mention this in Bahrain, but Audi probably has the luxury of having a larger cost cap budget 
considering they didn't take part last season, so they probably get like how the cost cap works is the lower down you are, the more you cap you get to have the following season. Uh, and uh, there are well small rumours that maybe a couple of teams didn't comply uh, with the rules last season. It's only rumblings, however. We're hearing that maybe Red Bull and Aston Martin may get looked at later in the season for that. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes, but there's been no real protest or wording to get. It's just maybe rumblings from somewhere. We'll have to keep an eye on that, but uh, yeah, that could be a contentious talking point considering Red Bull and winning the Drivers' World Championship last season. Maybe uh, Mercedes will have a reason Maybe to pursue the 2021 season finale again, if that is true, but uh, that's only rumours so far, that's nothing we can really confirm. But yeah, to continue with the story, it means that Audi have a large cost cap, probably the largest of the season. And, uh, well, they might not even need to exceed it if there is rumours of that. Obviously, Audi didn't do it, they weren't here last season. But, if there is, like, Audi could really make use of that, but they've already got a very decent car under them. And Aiden Jackson certainly proved that with all the overtaking he did in the Bahrain Grand Prix. And now he's lining up 7th, um, which is probably where the Audi is expected to be on paper. But we'll have to see how Nico Holgerberg does. He's definitely going to be the point of interest. But uh, the real point of interest is at the front, as we will finally have battle commence between Lewis ha uh, not Lewis Hamilton, but Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. We obviously hope Lewis okay, Hamilton's in there as well. In there. Nice one. That's going to give you the edge. Champion, of raw pace and talent. But uh, the Mercedes certainly isn't the all-conquering car we've seen in the past as Latifi and Holkenberg line up on the grid. And here come the five red lights ahead of the drivers. The green flag is at the back for the second running of the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go, go, go. It looks like a decent start for Verstappen. Charles Leclerc to come across as uh, did Carlos Sainz. Okay, good start there. No, it was the Kirk coming across. And there's Jackson down the inside of both Mercedes. Did he pass them? No. And yes, he did. Aiden Jackson has passed both Mercedes in the first two corners. What a start from Jackson on the soft tyres. That, that strategy really paying off uh, for Jackson in the first couple of corners. He passed both of them in the first corner. Lewis Hamilton looking down the inside there of turn five, I think. And uh, nothing doing against the Audi. That's going to be a surprise. How did Holkenberg do? He's still at the back, I think. But Aiden Jackson is up to fifth and is already being pursued by Lewis Hamilton. The possible man he can replace the Mercedes sometime in the future, perhaps. At the front, Max Verstappen already has grown to a half second lead over Charles Leclerc. Nico Holkenberg just hanging back, probably hoping uh, for some first corners carnage. Certainly, uh, since we had last year, but nothing doing this year in that terms of that. So Holkenberg's going to have to be patient. He's got the car underneath him. Uh, but he's still at the back. So who will reign supreme between the all-dominant Red Bull at this track and the all-round decent car for the season in the Ferrari? We're about to find out who will win that battle. And we have another one directly behind them. It's Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez are going to be also in very close proximity. Then we've got Aiden Jackson, who's the second behind. Probably no surprises there. Uh, followed by the two Mercedes, Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo completed the top 10. So Alonso, uh, Ricciardo plus Ocon in all of that. Uh, further down we've got Kevin Magnussen in 12th, so Kevin Magnussen with another great start uh, up into 12th place uh, ahead of both Alfa Romeos, that'll really please Haas. Then we've got Mick Schumacher ahead of Vettel, Pierre Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda, Alex Albon, Lance Stroll, Nicholas Tatebe and Nico Holgenberg at the back and that is your field of 22 as we end lap one. No DRS yet. And that's Magnussen going down the inside of Esteban Ocon there as we cut to a replay. We didn't see it going to be the start from Jackson. So what happened here? How did Jackson manage uh, in all this to get alongside the Mercedes cars? Oh, he did. He did. Oh, there's a rub. There's a rub of tyres on Russell, but Rubin's racing on that one. And then Jackson had tremendous speed out of turn two. That car, when it's not under steering like a boat, is so good in the hands of Jackson. And uh, that was a big bog down there from Max Verstappen. Uh, I think our data shows that Charles Leclerc also bogged down, so Verstappen and Leclerc had equal scars, so to speak. And uh, Verstappen leading comfortably from the front at the end of the first lap. Here's the start from Leclerc, and once again he bogged down as well. He cut immediately across uh, to cover his teammate, who was side by side with Perez, uh, going into serve one. I think Perez won out there. I can't really see because already Max and Charles race away. 
and uh, DRS will be enabled now. Kevin Magnuson uh, did not pass as Devan Ocon as Aiden Jackson there is looking around the outside of Carlos Sainz. The Audi is battling with the Ferrari and he's done it. What a move by Jackson. Jackson with a tremendous move and Audi is right up there at the front. Of course Aiden Jackson's got the soft tyres so he'll be sp uh, pitting a lot earlier than others. Nico Hulkenberg is starting to make his way through the field as he's side by side with the TV. Uh, like Jackson had in Bahrain, it should be rather academic. And the TV decides to hang it in side by side and the TV's got ahead of him. Wow, that Williams has tremendous run out of that corner. Hulkenberg will be really surprised but he didn't just sweep past uh, the Williams there. And uh, well, Hulkenberg's on the medium tyres and so is everyone else bar Jackson. And Jackson's making it work up into P4. And uh, maybe Jackson could be on line for a podium here. I mean, that's a very long way away. We're only lap three of this Grand Prix. But uh, wow, Aiden Jackson is certainly putting those soft tyres to good use. And uh, he's a second behind Perez at the moment. Uh, he's gained a few temps on Perez. There's signs of red behind him. Did you yeah, see Aiden Jackson with his uh, rear wing open there? I'm not sure how he got DRS. Let's see. Well, he didn't open it, so he didn't have it there. I'm sure he cut across the track there, but uh, maybe race control will probably keep an eye on the Audi because it was an understeery like a boat all weekend long uh, when Jackson hasn't really been on it. Uh, in a normal circumstance, the Audi car has been understeering a lot as uh, there's side-by-side between -side Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen on lap four, round the outside, goes Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen, and he's done it. And uh, that was probably to be expected. So Ferrari still is the ultra, uh, let's say, the best uh, car on the grid overall. And that certainly proved to be the case there. I'll we'll have to see if Max can hang uh, with uh, Charles later in the race. He'll obviously have DRS. And we know that the Red Bull has tremendous straight line speed. We're getting side by side, side by side between the Mercedes. And then Lando Norris and Alonso directly behind them. And here's Jackson on the tail of Perez. And we must, Perez must have made a mistake somewhere because Aiden Jackson gave a second on him. The soft tyres are paying dividends for Aiden Jackson at the moment. Well, could he be online for his uh, second podium of his career? Obviously following on from the win, but he got up the 2021 Italian Grand Prix against the odds. Much more different car though for Jackson, much more competitive uh, than the Haas last season. Uh, certainly from the first race is evidence, although Nico Hulkenberg sadly is not making the inroads you'd expect uh, as we come to the middle of lap four. And Jackson has DRS, he's going to get an easy pass on Perez at some point. If Perez doesn't get on with it, Jackson's going to find DRS. There it is, he's wide open and he's looking and he's dummied Perez to each side. Oh, and there was, oh, there was a bump there from Jackson. Did Jackson, and that'll probably compromise it going around the outside. Yes, just about. And oh my word. I don't know if there was contact there, but it certainly compromised Jackson on uh, through that corner. But he's going to have a second LB to get DRS down the start, finish straight. Surely Aiden Jackson's not going to get third here. And he is, and it's comfortable. Aiden Jackson in the Audi Sport F1 car is running third. And Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, if they continue to battle, who's to say that Jackson will catch these two? Max Verstappen's got back ahead of Charles Leclerc now, uh, as the reverse has happened in the previous lap. But Aiden Jackson in the Audi small car is now running third and struggling with his car because he's gone off the track a couple of times there. I wonder if that will get noted by the race stewards. I don't know if you would really gain an advantage out there, but they might get looked at for that. And uh, we are hearing he has Aiden Jackson already race control on it. So track them is involved in car 89 just noted for now. It isn't a warning strike or anything like that. You get three strikes before you get a black and white flag, I, I think, or is it two? And then you get a black and white flag, and then you start incurring penalties. So Jackson's only going to note it for now. So maybe they're realizing that Jackson won't gain much by being out there. And he didn't really intend to go and leave the track because he was turning in that car. But the Audi small car has been suffering from understeer in this race which is probably why Hulkenberg isn't making the e ears although to be fair he has passed the TV. We've got this midfield battle going on now and it's once again the Alfa Romeos and Mick Schumacher involved just like it was in Bahrain. We've got uh, Sebastian Vettel following directly behind him. It's definitely in the midfield we have a lot of racing here side by side with Bottas and Ricardo. Kevin Magnussen is racing away from the Alfa Romeos 
and uh, oh, there was, was that contact there between oh and Schumacher. Schumacher down down the inside. Wow, where did he come from? P13 for Mick Schumacher. Much better race for him than he had in Bahrain. You know, DRS. But also, so is Zhou Guan Yu and uh, Daniel Ricciardo is going to be either side. We're going to be three wide going into turn one. Who's going to come out of this ahead? Schumacher, I think, just, although Zhou Guan Yu will have the better uh, line going out of the corner, and he did. And uh, wow, well, in the midfield, we've got plenty of racing. And uh, Hulkenberg has fallen back a little bit from this battle, but he probably should catch them back up because they're all jostling for position ahead. So Hulkenberg should be able to get back in uh, on the tail of that, no problem. And uh, Max Verstappen still leading, still ahead of Charles Leclerc. Aiden Jackson's dropping behind them now by two seconds, so he's out of DRS range. It looks like these two have the uh, the head of Jackson, or the performance over Jackson, let's say, in, in terms of the car. And uh, looks like they won't have to worry about him for the rest of the race. So I think Jackson's kind of, uh, kind of, um, let's say, priority now is to keep ahead of Perez and Sainz and gain Audi's first podium in Formula 1 in their second race. The signing of Aiden Jackson proved to be absolutely vital for them in getting the results they have so far, even if Hulkenberg did finish ahead of Aiden in the last race in Bahrain, but that was only because Jackson ended up spinning and had to fight through the field all afternoon or all evening, and he did. He succeeded in spades. So, this will be interesting now because it looks like Perez and Sainz will have DRS behind so this will close them right up to Jackson because he won't have DRS from Leclerc as he's three seconds behind as the front two are racing away again very much like in Bahrain we're already on lap seven and uh, Max has now got a three second lead over Jackson well it will be about three seconds because Charles Leclerc is three seconds ahead who's then three times behind for Stafford so in kind of law of averages Max will have a three second lead over the rest of the field. Bar Leclerc, obviously. And, uh, this could be a fight that goes on all evening. And would we love to see that? Yes, we would. But it looks like those two battling isn't helping Jackson in terms of catching them. So the priority for him, and I'm sure Adi, uh, Mark Priestley has already told him, focus on behind you, but don't defend too hard as then you end up weaving and moving across the track uh, to get possible driving standards, black and white flags. Aldi do not want that to happen. They've probably told Jackson to be mindful of the track limits as well because they don't want too many penalties to get a penalty for that either. This is absolutely crucial for Audi with Nico Hulkenberg making no inroads on those ahead. And Carlos Sainz is diving down the inside. Perez has run wide. Perez has run wide in that corner and Sainz has took full advantage. Now, this will be interesting because Carlos Sainz is de the definitely the Ferrari is definitely better than the Audi Sport car and Sainz Blows past Aiden Jackson. Nothing you can really do about that. Oh, he's locked up. He's locked up. And there's a piece of debris there. Was there contact? I think that hit Perez there. And Sides is going to the pits. So he lost an end plate of his front wheel. He did. So there was contact there between Sides and Jackson. And uh, what damage will Jackson have? Well, that puts Sides well out of position for this race now. Uh, controversy, maybe. We'll hope to hope for a replay and see what happened. But definite contact between Sainz and the Aldi. And I think Jackson had every right to take the inside line because Sainz was locking up in the hairpin in the final corner. And uh, Jackson probably had every right to go there. So Sainz really, probably that uh, damage was self-inflicted. I have to see uh, if the FIA take any view into it. Or the race stewards perhaps. The FIA, well it's the same thing I suppose. Here's the replay then. So... Sainz is really well, he has DRS and uh, Perez doesn't for some reason. He runs wide, Jackson takes the inside, he won't get really looked at for that type of uh, excursion I wonder for. This is only like maybe the two wheels off the track. So Sainz goes to the outside, Jackson gives him the room, knows not to fight it because it is the Ferrari. And he locks up and he turns into Jackson there. From what I saw, he looked, Jackson had every right to be there and I think he was ahead. Let's have a look. So Jackson gives Sainz the space, doesn't fight him because it's the Ferrari, so Jackson knows where his race is. Sainz locks up. Uh, Jackson takes advantage, and I think he had every right to be there. I think Sainz, I think that damage was self inflicted from Carlos Sainz. I think he turned in on him. Guys, check the car. Carlos turned in on me. I'm not sure what he was thinking. There was plenty of space on the outside, and I was well in the corner. 
Looks like he came off worse, Aiden. He's the one paying for a front wing change. Sensors suggest that the car is fine, as it was just tire on tire brush. You should be fine to keep going. You've done a great first stint here, Aiden. You can't wait till there's everything soon. We'll bring you in for hard tires to go to the end of the race. Keep your head down, bud. You're doing fantastically well. Okay, copy. I think I think that Jackson is right. I think Carlos turned in on him. I don't think there was any need for Carlos to do that. He was locking up and running wide in the hairpin. Jackson was ahead of him in the corner. It was his corner. And Jackson had to go for that move. So, in my view, I think Jackson's right. I don't think it'll be like a causing a collision penalty for anybody. But I don't think that was Jackson's fault. I think he, he had every right to take that corner. Carlos was locking up, running wide. And uh, Jackson is coming in this lap. As we see from the pit radio conversation. And uh, Box confirm for Aiden Jackson. He copies that and he will be in at the end of his lap to get rid of the soft tyres. This puts him at a disadvantage now though because uh, he's running a lot uh, of a shorter distance uh, than those on the median tyres as uh, Charles and Max will go on, as will Perez. And uh, Jackson will pull to the side and head down the pit lane at uh, 50 miles an hour. Breaks of the pit limiter. And the Audi Sport F1 crew are ready in the pit lane. They've been stunning on their pit stops so far this season. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that's beautifully done from Howdy Sport F1 team. They've certainly taken some lessons from Red Bull as far as pit stops are concerned. But now that where Jackson is, he's in all this traffic. And uh, Audi have struggled in traffic this race because Holkerberg is only 20th after nine laps. And uh, well, he's not making any inroads on Albon at all. And uh, Holkerberg is certainly struggling in the first stint of this race. But now, Jackson is right in the thick of it uh, on this battle. He's gone off the track again. And uh, still struggling with the understeer of that car, which is probably the FIA giving him, or the race stewards, or race control, giving him some leeway, because the Audi has been known to uh, understeer a lot here today. As he goes around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo, immediately gets on it and starts passing some cars. In fact, I think Jackson probably came out in a very good position here because he's got uh, he's got um, Mick Schumacher ahead who will not be uh, the hardest person to pass in the Haas uh, because they have really not shown that the pace that was promised by their man Alfa Romeo so far. They've not really shown the pace that the Ferraris have or at least with Charles Leclerc in the first two races. Be interested to see what happens in the pits between Verstappen and Leclerc, but that would be for another maybe three or four laps yet. But if Jackson could pass these guys early and get some clean air, it might help him getting back into third if he's lucky. Uh, but the only real battle in those positions, and he did pass Mick Schumacher in Jackson, and he's looking to trade Zhu with it, uh, Zhou Guan Yu with him, and he kind of he did. Stunning move by Jackson. He cut right back to the outside. I wonder. If there was a second move in all that, I don't. I don't think that's something that we'll take a look at. So let's have a look at this here, the replay. So he passes Mick Schumacher. He's uh, he's off the track. He's going off the track into the pit lane line, but Schumacher is kind of pushing him there. And then he tries to go to the inside. Should we the covers and Jackson sweeps back to the racing line? Can he do that? I'm pretty sure he can. I mean, he is. He was only really forced into a second move because he had a lot more pace than uh, Drew did. Let's see this. So Jackson is going to go left. Well, it's not reckless. It's not reckless from Jackson. It's not like he's moving under braking like the Max Verstappen rule used to be. I think that's fair. You know, he, he was quicker than Schumacher. He had plenty of space to go back across that way. It might be more than one move, it might be just on the edge, but even still, it's a tremendous couple of passing moves there from Aiden Jackson. Now he's a second or so behind Magnussen, which is probably the last car he needs to clear before clean air is available. Because then there's a two second gap between Bottas and Magnussen, so Bottas and Magnussen have had the best of the first stint. Magnussen in particular is his tenth. <laughs> Magnussen's having a great comeback, isn't he? He was very unlucky not to score in Bahrain because Jackson was just on another planet compared to everyone else, bar Charles Leclerc, obviously. And uh, now the Mercedes is side by side. 
No team orders at Mercedes then. And uh, George Russell gets ahead of Hamilton. And uh, these two are certainly... Uh, there's no team orders in play at the moment. As uh, Esteban Ocon passes uh, Mando Norris. So your top 10 is for Stappen from Leclerc. As Jackson runs wide again. And uh, he's been doing that a lot in this Grand Prix. And he's gone wide there. And I wouldn't be surprised if the stewards take note of that. Because I'm pretty sure he would have gained something there. So I reckon that could be a warning for Jackson in the near future it certainly is so track limits warning for car 89 that's Jackson so that's pretty much strike one or strike two if you want to count the noted as a strike perhaps I don't think they've struck him out there but uh, yeah certainly gained an advantage by going out there but he, was, he wasn't trying to leave the track uh, he was definitely turning into the corner but the car just will not comply with him in the high speed sections. But even still, Jackson is making the best of it. So the pit stops for the front runners have started. Max Verstappen is in. And he's beaten Charles Leclerc out of the pits. As uh, one of the Mercedes comes in. That's Hamilton, I think. Because Perez and Russell have gone on. So where does this leave Jackson now then? It leaves him seventh at the moment with Perez, Russell, Ocon and Norris still to pit. So has Jackson had enough like clean air and space to get some clean laps and come out ahead of Sergio Perez? Because he was they were they were well clear of Russell as Jackson left the track again. I think that was an Audi going off the track and uh, Jackson is really struggling with the handling of that car at the moment. I think we'll let him off. I don't think we could really see much there. I just saw it in a flash. Well, meanwhile, he's uh, going past Esteban Ocon now. Almost an inevitability about Jackson passing cars these days. And he's gone off again. And uh, will he give the advantage back to Ocon? He does. But he'll have DRS. So, I think as long as he doesn't pass Ocon in this DRS zone, I think it'll be fine, which he doesn't. So Jackson will now be free to pass Ocon because he's not gained a lasting advantage through that one, which I think he probably did against Magnussen, and that's why uh, the race control struck him a little bit with the with a warning. As Perez comes in, now has Jackson cleared Perez here? That's the question. And I think he has, you know. There's Jackson there. So, yes, he has. Aiden Jackson has cleared Perez in the pits. Of course, uh, even though he pitted first and a few laps before him, Jackson has jumped Perez in the pits. What a stunning few laps from Jackson that is. Well, he may struggle with the handling of his car, but Jackson is having a stunning race. And now, that could be legit P3 now. Now we'll see how good the Red Bull is. Carlos Sainz has moved up to 7th despite going to the back. I wonder if that's another leaving of the track there by Jackson. He's, uh, he's certainly struggling and he's doing it on a regular basis. And I think we're hearing that Jackson is going to get a black and white flag for track limits. So now Jackson has to be really careful because one more and he'll get a penalty. And that will be devastating for Audi. We need to watch it down. Alright, mate, we've just received that black and white warning flag from race control for track limits. We know you're struggling with the car's handling today. If you do feel yourself going off the track, I would suggest backing up a little bit just to make sure you don't gain any more of an advantage. Copy that. So Audi have advised Jackson that he is on a warning, and I think there was contact between Leclerc and Verstappen there. I think there was a sideboard hitting tyre between the two leaders. It's getting feisty out there between those two. This is the battle we've been promised and we've been waiting for for years. These two battled like this when they were, when they were kids. Now they're doing it again and I'm sure there was contact there. It's getting feisty at the front. 
And if these two battle hard enough, maybe Jackson can catch them. But he's four seconds behind them already. And now he's got Ber uh, Perez bearing down on him. Nico Hulkenberg still in 21st and struggling at the moment. It's a shame, really, because Jackson is making it work. And Hulkenberg is stuck in 21st and can't get anything ahead of Albin. I think there's a DRS train at the back, to be fair. Led by Lance Stroll. I think there's only like a 2-3 DRS train. Daniel Ricciardo is passing Mick Schumacher around the outside. Well, Schumacher's in a much better race this time, but he's still going to score zero points by the looks of it. Meanwhile, his teammate, Kevin Magnussen, is going to get a vital point for Haas. In, uh, they're only the second race under the uh, new car regulations and the uh, new C-Spec Ferrari power unit. So, Magnussen is certainly making it work for him, so credit. And also credit to Albin and Hockerberg. They've had great comeback times so far, but for Nico Hockerberg, this will be a bit of a disappointment. Really? Because he should be breezing past these folks. And he's not. And there's George Russell, and he's out. George Russell is out. Will that be a virtual safety car, perhaps? Uh, no word so far, but there's a retirement then for a Mercedes Works car. We haven't seen that in years. I can't remember the last time we saw that. So, bad luck has struck, struck George Russell then. And what a shame. He was battling hard with Lewis Hamilton. But, unfortunately, his race is over. And that promotes Carlos Sainz to sixth. He was last after a pit stop and a front wing change. I think we know the power of the Ferrari Suspect power unit. I think that's pretty much left it in undeniable now. That C-Spec power unit in the right hands of the right car is an absolute monster. Because Carlos Sainz had a great recovery drive up to 6th and he may still pass Hamilton yet. He might struggle to catch back up to Perez and Jackson but uh, wow, what a recovery from Carlos Sainz then. Right back in the thick of it. He, was he may have to pit again. What tyres is he on? We didn't see. Next time we pick up Sainz we'll try and see if we can see what tyres he's on. Because if he's on, the, he's on the hard tyres I think. I think I saw it in a flash there. Sainz is on the hard tyres. So that pit stop for a front wing change has put Sainz in a really good position if he can get those hard tyres to the end of the race. Jackson also went onto the hard tyres, he didn't go onto the medium. So what, what Audi have pulled uh, strategy wise with Jackson is working to perfection to get them at least fourth if not third. Here's Valtteri Bottas battling with Kevin Magnussen uh, for ninth and tenth. So. Haas can certainly get points on the board in this race. So Jackson has somehow made it work. Even though he had to pit a few laps before the medium runners, Jackson has made it work to be on the same tyre as them in this stint. As uh, Carlos Sainz is side by side with his helmet. This is a great drive by Carlos Sainz. This is a fantastic drive by Carlos Sainz. And he pitted on lap seven. He pitted the lap before, uh, like the lap or two before Jackson. So if he can make it on those high ties, he's done sensationally well. As Magnussen and Valtteri Bottas continue to battle out of turn two and into turn three. And both drivers, both teams, will be looking for their first points of the season so far. Alfa Romeo and Haas. It was certainly probably going to be around where Alonso and Alpine were, but uh, they're not. They're even below McLaren at the moment. Norris on for some more points. He didn't score in Bahrain, of course. And now it's the switch around that's happened. Now Norris is scoring and Daniel Ricciardo is down in 12th at the moment. I think he's heading a DRS train that consists of Joe Guan Yu, Mick Schumacher and somewhat Pierre Gasly. In fact, it is Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda. So there's a DRS train from 12th down to maybe about uh, maybe Nico Hulkenberg, who's finally passed Albon, by the way. So that's P19 for Hulkenberg now. As uh, Verstappen and Leclerc to continue their battle. It's been race long between those two at the moment. We're not, fo we're not really focusing on it too much. As the director wants to find out what everyone else is doing first. Hulkenberg needs to try and catch back up to Lodz. Stroll in the Aston Martin. 
Not been the greatest race for Algerberg, while his teammate is on for a podium, possibly. Wouldn't that be great? Audi Sport F1 team on the podium in their second race. Further vindicating their decision as Jackson leaves the track again. And uh, will he give Perez some time back? I think he has. He wants to avoid another penalty. And I want to see I want to see Perez's timer if it goes below a second, which it has, so Jackson has given the time back. So he knew that he cut the track off left the track and he's given the advantage back to Perez. Very smart driving there by Ian Jackson. He does not want to have his race get out by a penalty. So he's given the advantage, like the time back to Perez that he might have gained by going off the track there. Very well played. Well, this is on a warning. He got the black and white flag. But nevertheless, despite this car, it's been a sensational drive from Ian Jackson. But now, here comes Perez in the Red Bull. And the Red Bull. Quite a golfing class between them and the Audi, although probably not by much considering Jackson has been able to stay ahead of him for, mo for the most part and actually get ahead of him in the first end of the race, albeit on the so Jackson was on the soft tyres. Jackson holds it up into turn one and holds the position. He's got every right to fight as Verstappen has passed Leclerc again. These two having a lap by lap battle. We don't know who's going to win this race. It's going to come down to the last lap between those two as Sainz and Hamilton. Resume battle for fifth place. And uh, we have Bottas now ahead of Magnussen, who's being chased by Nesta Van Ocon. But Magnussen has DRS on Bottas. And nothing doing, unfortunately. Will he try and hang it in? He will. He might make that work as uh, one who's drove us past uh, Daniel Ricciardo then. And Schumacher's not far behind them either. Olderberg is being chased by Alex Albert. Well, we don't want to. We don't want to hit Hulkenberg while he's down. But he's certainly not having a great race today, Hulkenberg. We expected him to be around maybe P12 uh, by the end of this race, and I don't think that's a great look for Nico, considering Jackson was able to get into the points from the back of the grid. Of course, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia are totally different tracks. The uh, passing opportunities are less around here because you don't want to veer off the track and into a wall. And speaking of overtaking. Perez has passed Jackson. And that's rather academic. And there's another lock up there by Perez. And is there going to be contact? There is! Exactly the same scenario has happened to Perez. And Perez will be going into the pits. <laughs> wow, deja vu or what for Aiden Jackson then? Uh, once again, I think that's self inflicted. Perez can now go onto the medium tyres, mind you. Has he got enough of a gap over... He'll probably still stay in the top 10, although he has to have the front wing changed. Red Bull are very much like clockwork when it comes to their pit stops. Perez is only going to come out around maybe 7th or 8th, so he's still going to get some points from there. But once again, drivers self-inflicting their own damage, trying to keep ahead of Jackson in the final corner. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same scenario that Sainz just had. See the replay. So, Mike signs, takes to the outside. Perez gives him room. Uh, Jackson gives him room. Locks up and turns into him again. Pretty much the same scenario. And again, that's uh, Perez's fault because Jackson has the corner because Perez is locking up and veering wide. Yeah, it's not like. Jackson opened the steering and hit him off. That's again the opposing man. Okay, is it me or am I feeling a sense of deja vu? Now Checo's hit me in the same scenario, the same corner. And the same outcome for him, Aiden. He's in the pits for a front wing change. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay then, copy that. <laughs> okay, so Jackson's seen the funny side of it uh, because it will feel like deja vu. But once again, I'm pretty sure that Jackson has the corner. So Perez turns very early, strangely, and he locks up round about now. Or is his lock up like later because it's not happening? So we didn't see the lock up there, but again, Jackson has the corner. He's ahead. He's a whole car ahead of Sergio Perez. Perez should have given him more room there. That's very much like what Sainz did. 
So, again, Jackson does nothing wrong. He has the corner and he has the right to the corner because Perez was locking up. So Perez is now down to 8th now and behind Carlos Sainz who pitted first. Now Carlos Sainz is 11 seconds behind Aiden Jackson with about 6 laps to go. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he catches him in the latter stages of his race. But Jackson is now on for a podium legit. At the moment, he has fended off his challengers and they've taken themselves out with front wing damage. And uh, now Holgerberg, now Holgerberg is racing. He's caught to Lance Stroll and he should pass him rather easily, really. Considering the Aston Martin is not the best car this season. As Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen are battling again, this has been going on the entire race. Away from all the shenanigans of Aiden Jackson's race. We've kind of forgotten about the battle with the front, and it's still going on between Leclerc and Verstappen. I'm very surprised uh, not one of these two had to come into the pits earlier uh, with their brushes with each other. I think you can see the markings on uh, Charles' side pod there. Let's just watch Jackson for a moment. And uh, yeah, he's being very careful. You can definitely tell he's trying to avoid leaving the track as Sergio Perez gets the fastest lap and he's passed Kevin Magnussen already so Perez now on the medium tyres that will be hard to be beaten I guess so it's a silver lining there for Perez I don't think he meant to do it but it's definitely uh, a somewhat good scenario this for Perez now he's catching Lando Norris in the McLaren who's right behind Alonso, right? no, he's about two seconds behind him, sorry. Or is he? Yeah, he's two seconds behind him. Meanwhile, this battle is still going on for 10th between Kevin Magnussen and Valtteri Bottas. Let's hope for Haas's sake that Magnussen can hold on. Back to the front and back to Leclerc and for Stefan again. And, uh, Hamilton's passed signs somewhere. So those two are going to stick together like glue on the track. Uh, child, child trying to get a very late move down the outside and Max got squirrely out of turn one. That's going to compromise him for turn two. And uh, Verstappen gives Leclerc the space he needs to get through there. And he cracked a little bit under pressure, Max Verstappen. And uh, some say that that could be Verstappen's weakness, his battles. I mean, I personally disagree. Jackson, uh, Van Dessen, uh, Verstappen rather, one of the fiercest battlers in this sport. And uh, he's certainly giving Leclerc a run for his money. Certainly not the runaway race that Leclerc had in Bahrain. As Carlos Sainz continues his magnificent drive to the field, part repassing Lewis Hamilton. I think it really proves how powerful the DRS can be here. Certainly. And uh, is Holgerberg catching Sebastian Vettel? Sadly, no, because he's four seconds behind him as Albin and Stroll switch positions back and forth. So, honourable mentions today for Kevin Magnussen, who's still 10th. Let's hope he can hold that point on for Haas. Poor Nicholas the TV has got left behind. Well, Mick Schumacher is definitely getting stuck in. It's all in vain, sadly, for no points for him, but he's definitely getting stuck in in this one. And he's keeping his nose out of trouble because he had the collision with Bottas in Bahrain that forced him into a pit stop. But the pit stop losses haven't been so great this uh, in this race with Carlos and per uh, Sainz and Perez that will test too, but their cars are a lot more powerful and all-rounded than the Haas is, but the Haas has definitely improved. But it's certainly not improved to the matter that we thought it would. Having said that though, Kevin Anderson is on for points. Here is Perez battling with Fernando Alonso and uh, he's doing the signs comeback drive. Rose and Rebels are so far in front that they can race away in the early stages and if things like that happen to Sainz and Perez uh, they can easily make it up 
I think Jackson has sewn up this uh, podium position. He's 11 seconds clear of signs and it's just steadily coming down some one of those signs is more probably preoccupied with Hamilton in this race. Meanwhile, back to the front, it's Max and Charles still locked in together on the track and keeping it rather clean, save for a bit of contact earlier. Well, whoever comes out on top in this battle deserves it. And I think, I think it's another one of those races where Max will get his own vindication as he's always been uh, branded as a reckless driver, Max Verstappen, but here today he's pretty much kept it out of trouble and relatively clean with Leclerc. And side by side out of turn two, going down the straight to turn three. It's going to be a risky move from Leclerc if he can pull this off. He does! And this is some frolic stuff at the front. Hopefully the director will stay on board with this. Because I think we want to see what happens at the end. It's been about two seconds game from Hamilton signs on Jackson, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to catch him. And he's en route for Audi's first podium in only their second race as he leaves the track again. There's no gain or loss of advantage there, so because he's got no one around him. So I guess the FIA will just keep an eye on it to see if he continuously does it on purpose which Jackson hasn't to be fair he does have an excuse that the car is under steering like a boat in this race as uh, Holgerberg is really making a late go of it late in this race it's just unfortunate that he didn't do this earlier in the race but Audi certainly don't get left behind that's certainly like they do it in terms of, in terms of the front the Ferraris and Red Bulls but overall Audi are very comfortably in the midfield that is great to see. So, on to the penultimate lap. It's going to go down to the last lap here between Leclerc and Verstappen. Verstappen around the outside with DRS. The straight line speed deficit that Ferrari have to Red Bull means that Red Bull really should be flying past Leclerc in the DRS zone. But the Ferrari is more than capable of hanging with the Red Bull at the moment. And Max retakes the lead. And Hamilton retakes four from Sainz. That's going down to the last lap as well. So all Leclerc has to do is be patient. I think he'd probably be better off waiting till after the start finish line to try and pass Max in a DRS zone. But we'll see what he does. Amazingly, Sergio Perez has only got to within three seconds of Carlos Sainz. Which really proves uh, Red Bull's superiority in this race, as Kevin Manderson's up to ninth. So, Kevin Manderson's on for two points now for Haas, and that would go down wonders with uh, Gene Haas and Gunter Steiner. Kevin Manderson was a man who was unceremoniously dropped and had the famous incident involving Gunter Steiner's doors. But right now, I think those doors will be safe. Because Kevin Magnussen is having a much better time of it than he did the first time round. It's a much slower car, mind you. But Magnussen's making it work. Schumacher's has definitely had a better race. But unfortunately, he's quite far away from the points at the moment. It's a wonder. It's a case of... It is a case of both when and if Mick Schumacher will score in this sport at the moment although rumours are afoot actually we'll probably talk about that in a second because we're on the final lap I've just completely spaced the fact that we're on the final lap and Charles Leclerc has passed for Stavon again but rumours are afoot that Gunther Stein has not particularly been happy with Schumacher and the and he is in Bahrain uh, was pretty vocal about about it apparently there are rumours of course but here we are on the final lap then, we're totally losing track of what's happening, I do apologise, but in any case, Charles Leclerc has repassed Verstappen, and that might be curtains for Verstappen when it comes to this race. I'm very sorry, I've completely spaced it, because we've been talking about other things. But the race director has seen it, or uh, the director has seen it, and you've seen it for yourselves. So it looks like 
going down to the final corners then. Let's see if Max can pull this one off. Will he try a Banzai move? Probably not, because this is a ma this is a race that Max will just want to get to the end and put some points on the board after the DNF of Barre. He's too far away there. He's not going to try anything there. Surely. Surely not. Last corner. And who is it going to be? Is it going to be Max and Charles over the line? Here they come. It's going to be Charles Leclerc who takes his second win of the season. Just. And what a fun battle that was with Verstappen. Aiden Jackson gets the podium for Audi Sport F1 team in their second race after another astonishingly great drive. This kid is definitely a great signing for Audi's first season. Probably the man they needed. Certainly proven so far anyway. That is P3 at the checkered flag, mate. That was a fantastic race. That first stint was incredible. Well done. You deserve that. Yes! I told you we'd be coming for a... Thank you, guys. The car was terrific. And indestructible, too. Can't be that, Aiden. Well done, mate. You deserve that. And that's no knock on Hulkenberg, by the way. He just really couldn't get out of the DRS trait. And, uh, well, he's already proven that he's the good comeback kid as well in Bahrain with those points. So it's no knock on him. But Charles Leclerc is a winner again in Formula 1. The second of the season. Opening up a bit of a gap to those behind him now. Carlos signs his terrific run came to an end. But he still got fifth. And Perez still scored despite those two losing their front wings in the race. Kevin Magnussen, a point for Haas. Much, much better than last season already. Because it took until... Um, when did it take until? Was it France? Yes, it was France with Jackson last year that they scored. And uh, sadly, that means no points on the ball for Alfa Romeo. That would not go down well uh, with Haas getting their first points. Poor Nico Ogilberg was really just in a DRS train or race, to be fair. So it really was no knock on him, and it wasn't really his fault. Uh, but uh, it was a bit more difficult uh, to pass around here. George Russell is the only retirement from the race. But absolute joy unconfined for Audi Sport F1 team who scored their first podium. And Jackson is on a roll. He said that he was coming for them. Well, they're not at the front yet. But that was certainly a symbol of intent. And that puts Jackson onto sixth in the driver's standings as Charles Leclerc pulls away the drivers with Max getting his first points on the board. Ferrari 29 I think that is already ahead of Red Bull who get ahead of Mercedes now and Audi go up to fourth after two races. That's not a bad start and uh well what a race Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen took it literally to the end but that man on the right Aiden Jackson is once again the star of the show but at the front it's like it was in Bahrain Charles Leclerc is your winner. Goodbye from Saudi Arabia. We'll see you for round three back down under in Australia when Formula One returns.